My scripture is in the fourth chapter of the Gospel of Mark. criticism, one learns amongst other things something of the literary makeup of the Bible. Mythological passages in the Bible. But a myth is not something that is not true. A myth portrays a truth. truth to be for worthy. In the fourth chapter of Mark's Gospel, Jesus This parable, 
you will find that Jesus starts out by saying, listen. And he ends by saying, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Listen. It seems to me that that the ability to listen is a great part of leadership. Listen. Listen. Now, all of us know some know it all. But a, a great part of leadership is the ability to listen. Yes. Yes. You know, most anybody can tell you something. Too proud to listen. I've been preaching 47 years. I've been a pastor for 43 of those years. Where I am now, September coming, make me 25 years. And some, as to Freeman, some of the best things going in that church now didn't come from me. They came from members. Not too proud to listen. Just, just by listening, you you might save yourself a lot of headaches and a lot of heartache. Listen. I don't want you to be mad at me. <laughs> the failure of so many of us as pastors of churches and as leaders is that we're too proud to listen. Nobody knows everything. <laughs> now, 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 when I say, listen, I'm not at all suggesting that a man ought to be gullible. When I say a man ought to be open-minded, I'm not at all suggesting that a man ought to be gullible. I don't just say that. When I say listen, when I say be open mind, I'm trying to suggest that you take time to hear another point of view. And once you hear it, a 
examine it. Weigh the proposition upon the scales of reason and reach a logical conclusion. If the thing is good, let's do it. You see, it, it, it doesn't make me any less the pastor because I accept somebody else's idea. Come to think of it, it might make me more the pastor. Listen. It's hard to get folks to listen. All through the Old Testament, you hear the prophets trying to get the people to listen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Then you hear Jesus say, listen, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. A sower went forth to sow. Now this parable of the sower is by some scholars called the parable of soils. But the traditional uh, designation of this parable is that it is the parable of the sower. Now Mark records it, Matthew records it, and Luke records it. The three synoptic writers record this parable. Now the word synoptic means viewing together. Now, when you read uh, these parables, you will find that the writers use four prepositions to tell us what happened to the sea. Now, some seed fell by. Some seed fell among. Some seed fell on. And some seed fell into. Now, now, now why did Jesus speak this parable of the soul. He spoke this parable of the soul first to indicate his determination to establish the kingdom of God in the earth. Uh, when he spoke this parable, he was putting his opposition on notice that he was in the world to get the kingdom going. And he would see it through to the end. In the second place, uh, when he spoke uh, this parable of the soul, uh, he would set before us the sovereignty of God. Yes. 
And in the third place, when he spoke this parable, uh, he wanted to inspire us with an unflagging zeal and an invincible hope. Well, my brothers and sisters, uh, I hope by the grace of God that I can encourage every Christian worker to cultivate the fear and keep your mind on the harvest. Cultivate the fear and keep your mind on the harvest. Now, when you read this, you will find that the sower sowed the seed and some fell by, some fell among, and some fell on. But some fell into good ground. Now, now, now you, you will not find this sower jumping up and down and wringing his hands and whining and complaining because some seed fell by. You, you, you don't find him losing heart and losing hope because some seed fell among. You, you don't find him ready to throw up his hands and go home because some seed fell on. He just kept right on soon. It, it, it seems that this knew to begin with that, that, that some of the seed would fall on to pockets of non-productive soil. But he, but he didn't let that stop him. He considered the seed that fell by and among and on to be just a part of the occupational hazard of being a soul. Uh, they, these are a part 
of the occupational hazards yes. of being a soldier of the cross yes. and a follower of the Lamb. Yes. Yes. You see, when you read this, you're going to find that this sword just kept right on sword. You don't find him complaining because some of the seed fell by and some fell among and some fell on. It seems that he knew deep down within that if he kept to his business, some of the seed would fall into good ground. And, and uh, he also knew that in the end, in the end, even though he lost some seed that fell by, and he lost some seed that fell among, and he lost some seed that fell on, but the seed that fell into brought forth so much until the gains offset the loss. Now, now, you are not going to win everything in this world. You're going to lose something. But thank God. Some of the seed will fall into good ground. Well, I must not keep you too long. Now, let me, let me see here. This, this, this man kept right on sowing. And I want to encourage you tonight to, to, to keep right on so cultivate feel and keep your mind on the heart well now I, 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 I'm not suggesting now that uh, you must close your eyes to the opposition I'm not suggesting that you must close your eyes to the difficulties. I'm not suggesting uh, that you must deceive yourself into thinking that uh, these things are not real, for they are real. But what I'm trying to get you to see is that if you look too long, at what falls by. Yeah. Yeah. And if you look too long yeah. at what falls among. Yeah. And if you look too long uh -huh. at uh, what falls on, yeah. you bow down. Yeah. Yeah. forget the potential gain. You, you see, you see, you see, uh, when it comes to evil, um, I, I don't have the right words to say this, but, but I hope you can see what I'm driving at. You see, sin has only one field in which to work. Sin is more in evidence than righteousness because, you see, sin's time is limited. You see, sin's got to hurry up and do what it has to do. You, you, see, you, you, you see, you see, sin, sin, is, is, is more in evidence. Look at all the seed 
fall. Look at all the seed falling on me. Look at all the seed falling on me. Well, that's enough to frustrate anybody. If you look too long, that's enough to discourage anybody. If you look at it too long, that's enough to discourage anybody. If you look at it too long, well, you got to understand that sin is real. Evil is real. Wrong is real. You must understand that as Christian workers, we are not always succeed. We're going to fail sometimes. But, but I don't want you to get bogged down because you fail sometimes. For you see, God never told you to be successful. Jesus said, be thou And sisters, uh, I, I want to try to get you to understand uh, that uh, as a Christian worker, as pastor of your church, as a leader in the Baptist training union, as a Sunday school teacher, as a personal worker, as a choir member, as a musician or deacon or trustee or whatever you are in the kingdom, just cultivate the field and keep your mind in the heart. So, well, you see, uh, you, you're not going to win all the time. For you see, there are pockets of non-productive soul. Some folks start out in January hating and they end up in December. They've been coming to church nearly every Sunday. But they have the same hate in December that they started out with in January. But brother pastor, you can see growth in some of your members because some seed fell into there were non-productive pockets of salt. A great many people who sit around and complain about uh, corrupt politicians and bad government. Uh, when it's time to go to the polls and vote to clean up the mess, they go fishing or some other place. The non-productive pockets of salt. A great many people go through school, but from the way they act, none of the school went through them. There are pockets of non-productive soul in every walk of life. I want you to understand that if you go through life looking for every son to have its desired effect, if you go through life expecting every good deed that you do, 
to bear fruit. You won't be disappointed. For some of the good you do will fall by. And some of the good you do will fall among. And some of the good you do will fall on. But thank God. Thank God. Some of the good you do will fall into Desire of faith. Yeah. yeah. For you see, in this world, the wicked do prosper. In this world, wrong does triumph every now and then. In this world, injustice wins out. Over justice every now and then. In this world, sin wins a battle every now and then. But I don't want you to become discouraged because sin wins a battle every once in a while. For you see, righteousness is going to win the campaign. And whoever wins the campaign will get the victory. My brothers and sisters, I must hurry to close. You are not going to be able to keep all your gain in this world. You're going to lose something as you go along. In the end, Paul the Apostle said, I've kept the faith along this journey. You will lose some of your friends along this journey. You will lose some of your support. Try to keep the faith. Yeah. Because if you keep the faith, yeah. the faith will keep you. Yeah. Well, yeah. My brothers and sisters, yeah. I've got to close my yeah. dreams. Spoke this power yeah. to indicate to his opposition yeah. that he was the tongue. To establish the kingdom of God in the earth. For Mark tells us that when John had been put in prison, the Jews came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. And saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven. Brothers and sisters, you recall in your reading that John the Baptist sent a committee to Jesus. Somebody said that John sent a committee because he was disturbed that Jesus hadn't got him out of jail. But I don't think so. I believe that John wasn't thinking about himself. He was thinking about what he had preached in the wilderness when he stirred the waters of the John the baptism of events. John was wondering whether or not the movement was going on. He knew shut up in prison. He wasn't thinking about himself. He was concerned about the kingdom movement. And so he got a committee and said, go find him and ask him, art thou he that should come or do we look for another? 
and Jesus didn't reply to John's question. He just went on and preached the gospel to the poor. He went on and healed the sick, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, and untied the knots in the tongue of the dumb, and took the heat out of feet, and cleansed the lepers, made the cripple to lay down their crutches. And in the evening, he told John his committed, go and tell John what you've seen and heard. You don't have to tell him anything about me. Just tell him what you've seen and heard. Tell John the gospel is being preached to him. Yeah. 